Hi, how's it going? In the previous video, we loaded models. That was all well and good. Now in this video, we're going to animate the models. Now I do want to give a disclaimer up front that I'm not doing skeletal animation in the mathematical sense. I'm rather doing a first approximation of skeletal animation, which is to say, we've got a skeletal animation in Blender, export it frame by frame, and display the appropriate frame. It looks a little strange on low frame rates, so I guess just don't display it at low frame rates. As, as far as just a non-technical thing for beginners to get into, this does the job pretty well. To be honest, it looks pretty good. Now, massive, massive thank you to Blender Boy on the Discord who generously constructed and sent me a, a Revy model, which I plan to use in, in various things. But uh, Revy, isn't Revy a cool character? I really, I like Revy. All right, I'll start with the shit on the left. Let's dance the jitterbug, baby! How does he... Incredible. We can actually see if we open up the models folder, we have our usual stuff and then these OBJ models. Each of these is a single frame in the animation. There are 19 of them. So it's the goal to basically load these all in and display them. And that sounds pretty simple, but there is a lot of housekeeping involved. And in order to keep this video interesting, I've done a lot of work behind the scenes. So have a look through the code in the GitHub repo, get familiar with it, but it would be a lot for me to talk through each of the refactors. So I'll try to just talk about things when they happen. What I wanna do for now is add an animation component. So if we open up the components folder, we have all of these components that we've been working with I will just go ahead and create a new one. I'll call this animation component. Excellent. Now I'll open up, I don't know, like a, just, I'm lazy. I very rarely write code, more often copy paste it. By the way, I don't know what's happening here with this include errors. It says can't include glad. I don't know what's up with that because if I close this file, that error goes away. And then if I run this project, well, okay, I need to reconfigure it. So just go delete cache and reconfigure. Great, now run the project. Oh, okay, oh, we'll get back to, we'll get back to that. Um, this comes from me implementing a, partially implementing a thing. Okay, so animation component. Question is, what do we need to describe an animation? We are going to need, I guess, a frame number, which we could have a lower frame rate than normal, so I'll just make it a decimal just in case. And we could, we're also gonna need a maximum frame count so that the animation loops back around. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. But let's just give this a go. Yeah, as you can see, the program is clearly running, so those errors are not anything to worry about. Right, so we have that. And like I said, this is a partially implemented solution. So there's our animation component. And then we've got an animation system. And the way an animation system works is it takes all of those animation components, every frame and updates them. What will it do? Well, very simply, it will look through all of them, increment the frame number, 16.66, uh, 16 and two thirds milliseconds for um, yeah, for 60 frames per second. So this, that's just making sure that this displays at about 60 frames per second. Um, loop back around if we exceed the frame count, and that's it. Now, I'll also talk a little bit about some changes that I made in the background. So now, with the render component, we think, what is it that we really need to describe something that we can render? Previously, we were storing handles to the mesh and texture. 
that's fine. But now I've changed it around so that I'm storing, I've got a struct which declares different types of objects and the same for animations. So if we go down to the config header, we've got our, our object types, uh, box, girl, and Revy for our character. And then our animation types are either run, uh, none or run. So no animation or running. Okay, so there's that. But then the question is, okay, how are things getting loaded? Well, that is actually happening in the render system. So the render system, open this up, has a mesh factory. That's another thing that I created. A mesh factory is just basically holding all the model load functions. Yeah, so it's just loading all the model stuff. There we are. So the render system creates a mesh factory, sends it some messages, says, hey, load this thing, load this thing. And it throws back the various, the various objects. So we can see there we're storing the VAOs, the VBOs, vertex counts, textures. Now this type definition here is a little weird, a little confronting. So I'll try to break it down. So in our world, we have a whole bunch of different objects. Okay, fair enough. And then each of those objects has a bunch of animations. Now it might be a non-animated thing. It's just got one animation called none, but it might be a character with a whole bunch of animations. And then what is an animation? For a given animation and a given object, it's essentially a collection of models. So it's a collection of VAOs, a collection of VBOs. Again, whoops. Again, the object could be non-animated, in which case it's a collection with just one frame in it. But there we go. Now, as for these vertex counts and textures, well, I'm making the assumption that a given object will always have the same number of points in each of its animation frames, in each of its animations, because if we were to do skeletal animation, we would have the same number of points. You're just taking the cloud of points and transforming it. Now, same thing for textures. I'm assuming that the same object will always have the same texture, no matter which animation or which frame of the animation is playing. So that simplifies this a little bit. And I hope I'm not going into like overkill on the detail, but I just tried to record a video where I refactored all of this by hand on the recording and it was not fun. And, oh, okay. So here is how the our render system would make its assets. We go ahead, we construct our mesh factory, and then we say, all right, I want you to make one of these things. I want you to make a cube mesh. I want you to make a OBJ mesh and stuff. And then it just stores that, okay? And we don't need to do any background checks because we are controlling this stuff by hand. Right, so when we come to render, again, this is a little weird, maybe a lot weird, but here's how it goes. So again, we clear the frame, then we look through everything that we're meant to render. Remember, that's a record that says render this object doing this animation. So, of course, no matter what, we're going to need to set its position and rotation. So we go ahead and do that. Then we, well, everything has the same texture. So we can just read off the texture, bind that. We're going to get the frame count, the vertex count, sorry, because that's the same for everything. And then by default we'll say by default the frame number is zero but then this if statement is checking to see if the thing can be animated and if the thing can be animated then something else is going to happen it won't be frame zero but anyway and yeah this is a little strange but it's essentially grabbing the correct frame yada 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 binding that and then drawing okay so that was my whirlwind tour through this rendering system Hopefully that makes sense. So that's all well and good. That's how the render system works. I guess the next step from that is how do we make the, the group of models to render Revy, make her run. Well, let's grab everything that we have here and we'll work with that. Now I just noticed something and that is that we can automate some, we can neaten some of this stuff up a little bit, is what I'm saying. So let's define a variable called object type. And the first object we're loading is a box. 
So I'll just take a second to fill this in. Ha, <laughs> whoops. Okay, cool. Let's do the same thing. And basically just, just fill in these other two. You can see what we're doing here. Okay, great. So now let's do exactly the same thing with animation type. There we go. Okay, so everything else has no animation, whereas our Revy object will be running. If we look down here, we can see clearly that this stuff is not tied to any particular animation frame. So let's go ahead and load that in straight away. And then for this part, this part will need to be done per frame, basically. And this is how I'm going to do it because I need to construct the file name on the fly. So I'm going to make a string stream that I can build up. And I'm also going to, going to extract that to a string. Fun, fun, fun. Um, let's take the first up, I guess. Let's take the file path, clear that string to be completely blank and then put this in. So if I look at the models, I basically want to load, I'm gonna go back to models, just like I do with images. So I'll go back one, models, and then these models are all Revy run with a bunch of zeros. So we have, this is a little tricky. Let me just give me one second. Okay, so it looks like we have five zeros. It also comes down to digits so we say um yeah if i is less than or equal to nine then add on an extra zero there are definitely more sophisticated ways to do this but this does it also so then we throw on the number that we're after and then dot obj then get the string that we just built and that's basically just building up these file names one at a time. So grab this line here that I forgot about. So I want to load that file path and this will complain because I'm throwing in a, a standard string. I need a constant, um, need a need a C style string, a character array. We can do that with the, oops, wrong, <laughs> wrong one. Yeah, with the C string function. Okay, great. So, fingers crossed, <clears throat> this has been done correctly. Um, and actually, I changed my mind. I'm gonna actually take this down here. So the texture's loaded once, that's fine. <clears throat> and I'm gonna just extract the vertex count. You can print these vert vertex counts out one by one and verify that they're all the same. They should be. But yeah, okay. So that should be loading Revy, basically. Okay, so I'm gonna do a really big cross my fingers, close that down, and then worry about this part here, the rendering. So it's actually not too bad. All I need to do is take the, oh, I forgot about that, no. Okay, take it back one second. So in addition to all of this stuff, we also need the animation components. We need that bit of information. So that's no problem. We can add that in. Uh, except, of course, I guess we'll have to... Where are we? Okay, so I I misspoke. There are a few bits involved here. So we're going to need to know about what an animation component is. And I'm just going to adjust the signature for the function so that it takes these in.
Okay, great. So, let's go down here and say, alrighty, we'll, we'll take a look at our animation components, that entity, get its frame number, and I think C++ will handle this, but just to be extra careful, we can cast that to an integer, a size T. Great, cool. So just to recap, when we go to render, we take in the information about things, positions, information about things, objects and animation status, and also about all of the frame numbers for all the animations. If we see that something should in fact be animated, then it's fair to assume that there's a corresponding entry in the animation components. We can access its frame number, send that along, and then that will be used to select the appropriate mesh. So that's how our render system is all gonna work. And we are so close to done. So what I'll do is we'll just go back to our app and we'll see now that should be saying we've got an error. Yeah, because when we go to render, oh, oh yeah, also, I forgot to mention this, but here's our main loop. <clears throat> we update everything, including at this point here, we update our um, animation system. We've got our animation components. That's great. All we need to do is, and that should be all the info we need to render. But you may note that if we go to render, oh, sorry, not render, if we go to run the program right now, we actually haven't created Revy. We'll have everything, the models will be in there, if we wanted to, like, but we don't have Revy. Okay, so what I'll do is we'll just go down to the factory, the main factory, and we'll make a, um, a function to make Revy. It's pretty similar to making the girl. Okay, so what I need to do is it's pretty similar, right? So Revy will have a transformation, no physics, because they're not moving. Um, we're going to render them. Okay, so the object will be Revy. The animation type will be run. Okay, awesome. Now for the animation. So animation frame, let's start that at frame zero. Frame count is 19 in this case. And let's just pop that on. Okay, fingers crossed. Let's, oh wait, no we haven't. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. So if we just go to the main and say here, make Revy. I'm gonna make Revy a little closer in the X axis, maybe a little offset in the Y axis. And I want Revy to be facing towards the face. So that would be a rotation of 270 degrees because zero is away from the camera, 180 is towards the camera. I think that's fine. And like I said, fingers crossed, let's find out. This will just take a second because we have to load 19 models. Okay, now there's our model. It's animating. We got some issues. Issue one is that I copied the pre-transform from the girl model. These models are made by different artists. Um, frankly, Blender Boy's model is set up a little better. Um, and then issue two is it's animating too quickly. I know I said, but this is too quickly. Okay, so let's tackle that one bit at a time. We'll just go to the render system because that's where we are loading in those models. And then I'm gonna change this rotation to rotation around the z-axis. As always, this is just, it comes down to experimentation. So I'm gonna rotate 90 degrees in the z-axis. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, whoops, wrong model. Oh, there we go. But it just looks like we're, we've, we've rotated the wrong way. So I'll just go back and modify that to negative 90 degrees. Great. Um, what's going on there? Okay. Okay, great. Uh, it's, it's a little high up, so I'll just add a translation to that pre-transform. Okay, give that a shot. There we go. That's a little better. I'm still 
Not sure what's going on with that. I don't know. The hair looks a little... Oh! Oh! I loaded the wrong model. Uh, the wrong texture. Okay. That totally makes sense. Alright, so... For the image, it's Revy Final. Okay. Cool. I promise I will stop the solipsistic um, self-dialogue in a second. I mean, we're almost done. Now, the other issue is animating too fast. So... With the way we can fix that is just go into the animation component and add an animation speed. And then for the animation system, we'll add on, yeah, we'll multiply by the speed, add that on. And then in the factory, when we make Revy, we can give that an animation speed. So for instance, pretty, pretty decent first start would just be to make it 10 times slower see what that looks like. There we go, much better. Now, as you can see, animation is a little janky, but I mean, I don't run at this speed. Do you run at this speed? That's crazy. So we can just dial up that animation speed a little bit. Um, I usually like to keep doubling it until it looks natural. So if I do that, that's an improvement. Still looks a bit slow. I think I found Maybe 0 0.3 is about. 0 0.4 I thought was a little too fast, so let's see what this looks like. Mm. No, I think that's about, I think that's about normal. Maybe it should be 0 0.4, but anyway. So here we go. Again, I think this is really demonstrating the power of ECS because this is such an easy system to make new objects by composing components together. But um, yeah, there you go. We went through animation today. We've got an animated model. We've got a scene with a few objects. I don't know what sort of game this is gonna turn out to be, but there it is. That's how you do it. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it and hope you have a good time. All right, bye. Hey, your bitch. It's Rebecca from the Lagoon Company.